presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host, who uh, always likes to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, we had a big gap up early in the day uh, that pretty much faded. I suspect a lot of people think that 2,900 is the magic number to short the living daylights out of the market. I don't see anything that says that it's time to short the market. At the same time, probably chasing dollar bills in front of a steamroller uh, going long here. So probably the best thing, I think, for the most part, uh, on the indexes to kind of stand back and let this fight. As Mr. Miyagi said in the uh, Karate Kid, best way to avoid fight, not be there. And uh, I think we're probably going to fight out for a little while until we find out what's going on um, with some earnings. But, you know, it's going to be a little while. I just don't see a lot of catalysts to either go higher or go lower. Uh, we're going to look at some stocks that have made some fairly decent signal that they're not going higher today. Uh, and maybe those that develop into something else. But you know what? We've got uh, tomorrow, uh, Delta Neutral and options. We're going to get a much better read. Uh, and uh, for the most part, uh, for my long-term longs, I'm sitting on them. Uh, for the uh, rest of the market, eh, it's kind of tough to actually say. We're just going to keep an eye on it and see what happens, but uh, eh, you never know. Anyway, uh, we've got lots of exciting stuff to talk about today, and even some snooze. Uh, and is, is there anything else? Other than that, time to get on with the show. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And on this day in 1955, the Le Mans race, organized by France Automobile Club, was first held in May 1923, has since been held nearly every year in June. The race always begins at 4 p.m. on Saturday afternoon, lasts for the next 24 hours over a 13-kilometer course. Uh, what is that, about uh, six and a half miles? Uh, running through the country roads near Le Mans. And if you ever go there, you've got to say it like that. Just drift off the very end of it, Le Mans. I've been to uh, two of the races, uh, quite quite the spectacular. Uh, there's a great movie uh, or documentary called uh, Ford versus Ferrari uh, about the 1960, I want to say 1968 uh, Le Mans, which is great. It's a documentary. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And the documentary is so good, someone saw it. Now they're making a movie, a, a big uh, movie out of it, but uh, takes uh, takes on Ford deciding in around about 1964 they were going to get involved in uh, racing around the world, and uh, pretty nice. Um, well, what's this down here? Oh, that's from yesterday. Um, but uh, that's it. Of course, uh, on this day in 1955. The big thing, uh, which is not down here, I don't know, I must have not saved it, uh, was that 83 people died in a car accident. And for the next uh, six years, um, in fact, three years in many uh, countries uh, of Europe, uh, racing was outlawed. And, uh, of course, now we have a whole bunch of other things like fencing and everything else to make it a lot safer for spectators to be close and uh, feel the action. But, uh, yeah, a lot has changed. Uh, let's go ahead and start looking at charts a little bit earlier today. As I said, there's some news. Uh, to, 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 to. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, that's a good song. And one of the reasons why people are talking about 
eminence front. One of the reasons why, one of the few, one, one of the few uh, songs actually talks about the stock market. Go look at the lyrics. Yep, the who? Who's on first? Uh, to do, let's go see what we've got. HDS uh, gap down. This is HD supply. Nothing to do with Home Depot, but they're a big distributor gapping down on some fairly big margins or a big uh, volume today. It's a BYND. Um, of course, everybody's going to be talking about this for a while. Uh, could you talk about a, tar, a, a TriStar Doji uh, in this? You probably could. I don't, you know, there, there's no way to short the stock. You, there's, I, I checked. There's nobody, at least nobody that I knew of, uh, to short it. Um, but at the same time, I don't think it's over. I think it's going to hover around here for a while. You may even get six or nine months out of this thing um, hanging up now that the underwriters are going to score huge on it. Uh, but uh, eh, you got a gap up, you got a gap down, and you do have a possible abandoned baby shooting star, whatever you want to call it, up there to 186. Uh, to, to what else is going on? Uh, semantic uh, gap down. And not a lot of volume out here. Wants to retest the 117.50. I think you need to do that. And one of the rare times that Amazon got its uh, uh, hat handed to it, well, we'll call it a hat, right, uh, is from Grubhub. They've been totally ineffective of going up against Grubhub for the last year and a half with their uh, Amazon restaurants deal. Uh, Grubhub, for whatever reason, has been able to push back on that and a huge gap up on Amazon saying that we will no longer compete in that space. Uh, but to do. And yeah. So where are we at as we go to break? Uh, we're up three points on the S&P cash. Uh, Dow's up uh, $17.50. NASDAQ up uh, about 10 and a half. Russell's up about, or excuse me, down about four. Uh, and of course, uh, when we look at some of the other more important things like volume that we were talking about today, and we're doing just a little bit more than we did yesterday, about 3.9 billion on the uh, on the CBOE consolidated tape. A dollar index down about eight cents at ninety six dollars and sixty two cents. And of course, uh, when we look at copper, the most important thing still just hovering right around this two dollar and sixty seven cent range. Um, we need about three bucks to start talking about any kind of inflation in copper. And Dr. Copper has been rather quiet and mute. So that's it. Uh, two, two, two. What else do we have? Eh, that's about it until we go to the break. When we come back, as I said, we've got lots of stocks to look at. A lot of them you could say, or normally I would say, go ahead and pull the trigger on going short on them. There's only one that I kind of like short. But, uh, eh, maybe we'll get to it today. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the Taz Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the Taz Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the Taz Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we're back, got our first question of the day. Got a couple of emails. Uh, from the den, your thoughts on tech earnings this summer? Been seeing some so-called experts, and I'm glad you said that. Calling for significantly lower earnings and guidance. Uh, no, you know, no. I'm looking at the markets because they're a better forecaster of what's going to happen six or nine months into the future, and I don't see anything in that. Um, I think there are some headwinds, but I don't think it has anything to do with earnings. Uh, in fact. Did I have that? Let's see if I've got that. Um, one of the things actually going on today um, that uh, I was going to talk about in the news, I can actually find it. Where's it at? There it is. Okay. It's hiding somewhere. I don't know where. Oh, there it is. I moved it over in the corner. Um, I will do this here. To me, the bigger issue right now is uh, the antitrust investigations into the big four, Google, Amazon, Am uh, Apple, and Facebook. Uh, with the examination and the, the way that they affect the news and the media landscape, um, some people are saying that uh, Google uh, takes somewhere around a half a billion dollars worth of free information uh, off of other websites, and that's uh, what the hearing today in the House Judiciary Antitrust Subcommittee will examine and whether or not the antitrust laws are effective in preventing anti-competitive behavior. Uh, so this is just the beginning of it. I think this is going to last several years. Um, they had the opportunity to act uh, above and beyond the call of duty. And what did they do? They operated on the worst uh, kind of uh, uh, how can I say, just the worst kind of, not the better angels of our nature, the the more the worst devils of our nature. Um, and I guess that old saying is uh, power corrupts absolutely, or absolute power corrupts absolutely. And for the most part, these guys have had uh, incredible um, power. Uh, when you look at Facebook, uh, I mean, Zuckerberg is still, uh, acting um, rather horribly in Hawaii on his housing and trying to gain the land. Uh, 
worthy of the uh, early robber barons of the train and and steel industry of the 1900s. Um, so, you know, between that and the molestation of free speech, um, these guys are are acting badly and poorly. And I think that's really the bigger issue right now. If we exclude these four folks, I don't see anything in the earnings that changes a great deal of that. But if you're talking about Amazon, Facebook, um, and maybe Netflix and some of the others. I think that there are some a lot of issues that are making it uh, rather difficult to think that those guys are going to keep up. Microsoft, of course, making new highs. Let's take a quick look at that. Uh, again, you got a little bit of a reversal out here, but no real signal. Um, you got just a little bit higher today. And what are we at here? About 132. Uh, as we see that, and that would be it. Uh, two, 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 two. Uh, okay. And see. Okay, we're up uh, a little more than two points on the S&P cash. Uh, up six on the Dow, up nine on the NASDAQ, and just down to 50 on the Russell now. Uh, it was take a look and see what else we have. Uh, first email coming in talks about gold. And we'll find out what Mr. Goldfinger, well, you certainly had the gap down yesterday and that looked fairly horrible. You got a little bit of a bounce out in the GLD today, but again, not a lot of volume. Um, you had uh, three advancing soldiers. Uh, you had two gaps out here uh, into the 127 high. Now here's the worst part of gold, and that is just no volume at the high. GLD on February 20th at 127.21 had 15.6 million shares. You came in to that with half uh, two days ago, and that was it. So a pretty horrible looking uh, up thrust. If you go back a little bit uh, further, uh, the, log, uh, the, the uh, leg up from November 13th up to February 20th, uh, on my power law vector indicator had a 5.1. The move from May 2nd up to the high on June 7th uh, just had a, f a little bit about a four. So it, why the energy didn't fall off a cliff, it wasn't high. And when you got to that high, you actually tested it with fairly significantly lighter volume, uh, which is problematic. Um, okay, let's go ahead and look at some other charts. I answer all my emails here. Okay. AAN, which is Aaron's Rents. Um, you want to look at this stock because, of course, uh, if these guys are doing real good, generally that means the economy, uh, especially at the lower uh, socioeconomic level, has some issues. So a little bit of a canary in the coal mine on whether or not these guys are doing well. Uh, $59.71 was the April 25th high with just about 2 million shares. Got into it yesterday with 1.14 million shares. A little reversal, but not much going uh, through it today with just 300,000 shares on the downside. Abbott Laboratories, another one testing the highs, may get a close underneath that high. You needed 12 million shares to get to the April 1st, $80.74 high. Uh, yesterday, you had been about 4 million shares. So about 30% of that volume. Uh, today, you got to a little bit higher high with uh, two and a half million shares, but it looks like you're going to close back in the trading range. Uh, Advanced Micro uh, had their big dog and pony uh, and a live event. I watched part of it yesterday. Uh, you got also kind of a little topping pattern out in AMD. Down today with 67 million shares, you were up with 97 million shares yesterday on a longer term basis. This was trying to test the 304 million share September 13th high when everybody was shorting the living daylights out of it and it would just continue going higher. And again, generally, you get a lot of people shorting it. Just means that the stock's going to go higher until they uh, give up. Uh, well, they gave up and it got back down to $16.17. From then, it's gone back up to previous highs. But you've got, uh, you know, this thing's probably in a bigger trading range from about 16 bucks up to about 34. So 
this one does have uh, some fairly big potential. My suspect, uh, uh, suspection, introspection, speculation is that this has uh, first support right around 27 bucks. 26 bucks is just underneath it, and probably and eh, $21. So this one, if I was thinking about stocks that could have some downside in the uh, fairly near uh, future, that one looks uh, just on a chart basis rather significant. When we come back, like we said, we've got lots of stocks to look at today. Uh, plenty of time for your phone calls at 877-927-6648. And, of course, email me at path at tfnn.com. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Got a question in the den asking me, what do I think about GDX? Uh, I'm looking at the short-term sector oscillator that I have every day in my daily newsletter. Path of Least Resistance, which you can always find out at the front page of TFNN. Uh, something I came up with, which is, I always love the uh, McClellan Oscillator, but uh, its glacial pace meant that you missed pretty much the bottoms and the tops. Uh, pretty good for letting you know the long-term uh, movement in the market. Um, so I wanted something else, and as you can see, generally what you worry about in the sector oscillators 
uh, is when you get uh, the short, medium, and long term all uh, basically hitting at the same time. And that's what you got yesterday uh, or the day before in gold. Uh, finally, you saw the, you know, let me zoom in here just a little bit farther. Um, you got the long term hitting, um, the short term. And that's generally a fairly good indication that just about every, all the good is in and the bad is out. And of course, you want to buy uh, on the uh, uh, washouts, which you basically had back here in the uh, late, what was it called, late part of April, uh, first part of May. Uh, and you know, anywhere in there, you're probably going to be fine. Uh, but of course, uh, the best one was the IYT, and why we chose that. In fact, let's just go if I can find it here real quick. IYT. Let's do this. 2019. We'll go back down to January. There we go. And this was an example of buying the lows and what I like in the uh, sector oscillator. That is that you get a handful of days where these things just absolutely get pounded uh, and continue lower. But you normally you're talking about five days at the low. Uh, and you want to be buying somewhere in there. So you had uh, to, to all of them hit by the 29th. So you had one, two, three, four days. And then from there, uh, just popped up higher. But uh, extremely good at buying the lows. Um, so when we go back and look at gold uh, and just the chart itself, you got back up into the highs of March 26th. That had about 41, maybe 42 million shares. Uh, you got into it with fairly similar volume. But for me, it was those two advancing soldiers, or actually three advancing soldiers, that basically said that that was going to be kind of an exhaustion move in gold. And you got to pull back a little bit of push uh, off the lows here this morning. But uh, you know what? I think those two gaps can get filled back to, 20, uh, to 21 on the GDX, and I think those things are probably going to get uh, probably filled probably before the 21st. My guess is that this thing can turn around. Anyway, uh, as I said, uh, give me a call at 877-927-6648 or email me at path, TFN, and N. Uh, just had a big, huge move uh, with a lot of force and a pullback. And I don't think there's much you can say other than that. Um, I just don't see uh, anything more. We'd have to have some kind of news, I think, that changed my uh, outlook on gold right now. But just in a bigger trading range from about, what, 1270 to about 1350. Uh, Brooks Automation, um, kind of a little bit of a uh, eye back in here. Let's see what else we have. 3965 with eight and a half million shares on August 28th of last year. Uh, got into that yesterday with about 445,000 shares. Uh, today, you got about 238,000 shares into that huge 8.4 million share high of August 28th of last year. So again, a lot of these stocks are up here, but they're just kind of whispering on volume, not doing a lot. One of the few stocks that may make, be making some kind of low and maybe not instantly, maybe take a little while and a little consolidation, is Carbonite, $21.83 was the March 6th low at uh, 1.4 million shares. I got into it, but missed it by about 17 cents with just 470,000 shares, so 33% of that. You got a little bounce. Uh, one more probably test in that area on light volume sets up a fairly decent risk reward. Uh, the Carlisle Group, on a very short-term basis, since a lot of these guys, uh, uh, are big men on Wall Street, been yakking a lot. Twenty-one dollars sixty-seven cents with nine hundred forty thousand shares. That was back on April thirtieth. Yesterday, you had five hundred sixty-one thousand shares. Today, four hundred and eighteen thousand shares. So again, a lot of these things just kind of coming up on light volume. CoreLogic, uh, back into a fairly long-term gap. That gap goes back to October 25th of 2018. 1.7 million shares on the way down. 
Uh, last time you tested uh, that gap was on 890,000 shares on April 24th. That was $42.70. Uh, last couple of days, 413,000 shares, 470,000 shares. Today, just 227,000 shares. Looks like a spike that ran up and turned around and came back down. Um, not a horrible looking chart, but just uh, one of these ones where you've got a lot of resistance uh, going back to where this thing gave it all up a while ago. Uh, CSIQ, which is Canadian Solar, uh, again, with uh, energy prices so cheap, it's fairly hard for these companies that produce electricity at four or five times the cost of fossil fuels uh, to get a leg up. And, of course, eh, governments are kind of done with throwing lots of cash at the issue, at least the smart ones are. Uh, down on heavy volume of 5.5 million shares back on March 21st. That gap has been tested uh, for the first time on May 3rd with 1.7 million shares. Uh, yesterday, you tested it with just 538,000 shares. Um, not going to short a $21 stock, uh, but at the same time, um, you've got uh, uh, probably a good shot at coming back and testing $16.70. Uh, Cozian Limited, Cozan Limited, Co Cozer Sosai Limited, CZZ is the symbol on that one. Two million shares, $13.18. Uh, and you got into it with half the volume a couple of days ago. Uh, it spiked, it came back down. You've got kind of nothing day yesterday with 745,000 shares. A doji today with 563,000 shares. Uh, also on that list of stocks that looks uh, and could look rather weak uh, is First Solar. Let's go back and look at this. Um, another doji after eh, pretty much a doji today with uh, just uh, 845,000 shares. That goes back into this May 3rd spike with $63.82 that had 4.5 million shares. So you're going to test it with about 25% of the volume. I don't know when earnings is coming up on that, but that would be something to check. Uh, <laughs> you know what? How many people know Kaiser Sosai? Sosai is, but yes, absolutely a fantastic film. Great, great cast and a great script. Made for almost nothing because it didn't really cost a lot to make. Just a lot of people sitting in a room. In fact, more of a play than a film, right? And a fantastic ending. Ending. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And uh, we're bouncing around down about three points on the S&P cash now. Again, um, options roll over tomorrow, so I'm not getting too excited about the uh, action today. And again, not seeing a great deal of volume as we did sell off. You had a little bit on the down move. Uh, but my guess is we just have a bunch of people piling on short, and we want a high where the shorts give up. And I haven't seen that quite yet. But uh, I'm not expecting a lot of move down. Did write in the newsletter this morning that the market was brittle. And you don't like to see highs on lighter volume. You don't know that for 100% that the market's going down. But you do know that if something happened, um, it's kind of like dropping your iPhone. If uh, sometimes you got the little cover on it, sometimes you don't. When you don't, it's brittle. It'll break. Screen breaks. You got a nice little cover on it, which is volume. At least maybe when you pull back, give you either time to get out or the fact that it doesn't go to back down that far. But anyway, probably closing out flat. Uh, tomorrow, look for more extreme volatility for options um, going into delta neutral on the 21st for the monthly options. Uh, and then I think we're going to have a much better read over the next seven or eight days. So I'm kind of, uh, I'm, I'm girding my loins, as they said in the Bible, a, a loin girder, uh, and waiting to see what happens and just really sitting on the, my hands for the rest of my positions. Uh, to do, what else do we have? Oh, let's go back to some of these others. Okay, lattice semiconductor. Certainly another light volume test. May 1st, $14.63, 4.8 million shares. Uh, got into that today with 1.2 million shares so far. Yes, it does. Doesn't it sound? Uh, sounds uh, bad. I'll, I'll, I can't even say why it sounds bad, but I will text you on why it sounds bad. Uh, okay, Momo has lost its Momo. Gap down back on the 10th of May with 13 million shares, uh, filling that gap today with 3.3 uh, million shares so far. So Momo has lost its Mo. Uh, PLD, which is Prologis, uh, hitting some resistance. Uh, let's get back up here. Uh, to to, to uh, 3.6 million shares back on May 1st. Um, $78.56 got into it two days ago, which is 1.56 million shares yesterday, 1 million shares. Today, 739,000 shares so far. So probably going to come in about what we did yesterday, but no real pullback, uh, but certainly not a lot of juice in it. But a lot of these stocks making multiple, multiple highs. So you do have to kind of keep that in uh, vain. But uh, and I just... I don't see a lot of reasons to be long, and I don't think the market's pulling back just yet. Maybe after options expiration, but we shall see. Philip Morris, been bouncing along uh, the support level, uh, set up by a gap higher. That gap goes back to the February 7th gap higher with 7 million shares. You're right back to it, and it's just going sideways now. I don't know how all this vaping thing is going to affect the cigarette companies. 
but either you've got a lot of uh, uh, distribution or a lot of support right here at the $78 level. RMD. Uh, is uh, ResMed, RMD, uh, 118.50 was a January 18th high. Man, that thing got blown apart. It's come back. You've got some multiple gaps right around about 108. Um, you know, you had uh, about, what, uh, about 180,000 shares so far compared to uh, close to 1 million share highs the previous times around that 118 level. Um, my guess is if this does fail here, coming back to 108 on it, SBGI, which is Sinclair Broadcasting, one of the most bullish charts. You may just need another bu uh, buck down or two, but man, did you take off with a sign of strength on the 6th of May. That was with 16 million shares. Uh, you're back filling that gap with less than uh, 700, well, less than 800,000 shares right now. So not looking too bad. I like to see about half the gap filled. That would take you to about 47.50, maybe 48 bucks. Uh, two, 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 okay. Eh, eh. I'm like I said, I'm not going to get too wound up knowing that options rollover for the delta uh, neutral positions is tomorrow. That tells us a great deal more. And a lot of times, if they want to push the market down into that, and especially into Wednesday morning, that starts today. And then if we see everything kind of bounce up tomorrow afternoon, then we can probably start thinking that it's more about uh, options rollover, maybe a little less about the actual medium or longer term options uh, um, issues. Uh, let's look at a few more stocks. Got plenty of time, Paul. Uh, to, to, to. Okay, got that taken care of. Uh, got that. Uh, okay. Okay, I got a uh, new post. I got that. Amazon.com, Arby's. Salesforce, I think we got all those taken care of. Wanted to make sure. Um, Sinclair Broadcasting, again, that. SMG, uh, Scott's Miracle Grow. Um, man, if you were thinking about pulling the trigger short on this one, uh, you're right back up to where this thing failed on earnings, uh, which is the 30th of January of 2018. Uh, 4.9 million shares. Uh, but again, as you come back and fill this gap, a couple of days ago, 447,000 shares. Yesterday, 440. Today, 204. Certainly looks like it could come back to 86 bucks uh, on just uh, a wisp of any kind of negativity. And I'm not much on the negativity right now. I'm more on the enough of the negative waves. Uh, TPX, which is Temper, Sealy, um, has come back up into its long-term um, resistance, which is this gap. Come on. This gap uh, that goes back to, to, to the September 28th, 2016, when this thing got blown apart. It's been trying to come back in there. You've had gaps up and gaps down at that level. That is the Rubicon for Simpy, uh Temper, sir, uh, sorry, I can't even say it. Temper, Sealy, because it's uh, now two, one company, right? They got bought out. Uh, around 70 bucks. If that could get up there in a spike, that looks like probably a place to plant a flag. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, up, LD, huh? Okay, target resources, uh, just sitting there going back and forth. I don't see a lot in that. Tractor supply, we are talking about stocks making new highs. Let's get a little closer to this one um, as we watch it. Four million shares back on April 25th, 107.98. 109.67. Of course, you never had the volume, about a million shares, about one-fourth of it. Back into the trading range. No soup for you. No soup for you.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Basil Chapman has a special subscriber webinar coming up Wednesday, June 12th at 5 p.m. called The Tide. In this webinar, Basil will be demonstrating techniques that can help one identify whether the tide is coming in or going out. That is, whether a trend is bullish or bearish in a variety of time frames. And Basil will be speaking specifically to indices, currencies, commodities, interest rates, and key stocks. The technical tools that Basil will be discussing are available on almost all software software packages that will be shown in historical context as well as live for current market setups. Identifying the key trend allows one to trade with the tide rather than against it. Subscribers also gain immediate access to three archived workshops so you can get started right away when you sign up. For all the details on the opening call and Basil's upcoming subscriber webinar, The Tide, this coming Wednesday, visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we are back at Tractor Supply. We were talking about that when we were going. Uh, about a fourth of the volume tested back into the trading range. Uh, Twillow, T-W-L-O is the symbol on that one. Kind of a triple top with a pullback today into the trading range on light volume. I would have liked to have seen some volume off the top. Again, we're not getting that. And uh, going into uh, options, uh, um, Delta neutral day tomorrow, sometimes called Weird Wally Wednesday, because everybody figured out that mathematically that's when you want to take off the risk if you're an option market maker. So you tend to push the market around a little bit, uh, not only with the options themselves, but uh, kind of give them a little help. Um, now on Twilo, 14 million shares on May 1st. That was 142.20. Got to 144.62 on a little less than 8 million shares on May 16th and gave it up. Uh, yesterday, you got uh, above that, spiked it with 4 million, 4.2 million shares, and the reversal back here today. But again, on light volume, and that's why you were hoping that, you know, you'd actually see some fairly stiff volume, and I haven't seen that quite yet. Uh, we talked about Under Armour actually holding the highs, um, actually doing fairly well today again, uh, and again in the housing market, USG. And it got a lot of volume, but not much movement. V, C, Y, T. Uh, what was this out here? I'm trying to remember. Verisite uh, spiked its 
April 8th high, the May 1st high, and you were looking for about 750,000 shares and about 556, which is not as bad as I thought maybe going into the day. So now we're pretty much uh, at the very end of the show. Again, I'm not going to get too wound up one way or the other until we get a little bit more traction in the market. But uh, tomorrow, 80% of the time, the low of the day will be the low between now or between then and options expiration on the 21st. So you've got to have a pretty compelling case to say that market's headed lower now. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And of course, be here or be square tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.